Hello world, I am Dan Brown and welcome to another edition of Tech Deck Deck Tech, the only EDH deck building show where uh, the host does terrible tricks with a finger skateboard while filming. Today we're going to be focusing on Zada Hedron Grinder. Now, when Zada was spoiled, I was immediately inspired and excited because I knew uh, that she solved Red's biggest problem, namely that the color is not very good at drawing cards. But I didn't know exactly how powerful the deck would be until I built it, and uh, this is high in the running for my most powerful deck. It runs different than, say, you know, Crufix or Chromat, but uh, it, it won a tournament of about 15 people this last weekend. So let's walk you through it. She's a 3-3 for 4, which is, I mean, not too expensive for a commander. The second time you cast her, she's 6, then 8, then 10, all perfectly reachable. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zodahedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So she's basically Radiate on a Stick, which is an ability that we can bust wide open. Now, I've seen a lot of people talking about her online saying that, you know, she makes aggro viable in EDH. And while I suppose technically that's true, I have found that the path of least resistance um, is actually to go more of a combo route with aggro being, you know, a, a plan B or maybe even C. We'll start with the relatively boring, uh, straightforward stuff, I guess. Uh, the removal package. Chaos Warp is, in my opinion, the best removal spell in the format. Let the debate rage in the comments below. Um, Volcanic Offering. This card is a little bit weird. It deals seven damage at instant speed to a creature, and then your opponents can do the same thing. It also blows up two non-basic lands. Red is hard-pressed for instant speed answers to creatures swinging at your face, so this is five mana, a little steep, but it usually gets the job done, and it can be really crippling to any opponents that have gotten off to either a strong start or just happen to be in, happen to be in the lead. Um, beyond that, I am going with just sort of board wipes. Red does do that decently. Um, Star Storm, we can cycle it if we don't need it, or just deal X damage to every creature. Perilous Vault is just kind of a big fat reset button. It's also a big don't swing at me bro button, right? If you have this sitting out, if people attack into you, you just wipe their board. Volcanic Vision. Okay, now we're getting into some meaty stuff. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Volcanic Vision deals um, damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to each creature your opponents control. Killing two birds with one stone. Red is hard up for returning things from your graveyard to your hand, first of all, and Zada obviously cares about instants and sorceries. And finally, Blasphemous Act. I mean, <laughs> these two cards synergize pretty well, right? If you return Blasphemous Act with this, it's going to deal, what's that, nine damage to each of your opponent's creatures. Um, not to mention that we're almost always going to have enough creatures on the board to make Blasphemous Act cost one if, again, we need to blow up whatever our opponents happen to be doing. Continuing now with themes that are good in pretty much any EDH deck, uh, next up we have our Ramp Suite. We'll start off with a couple of lands. Terrain Generator, if you haven't heard of it, is fantastic in pretty much any deck that runs a lot of basic land. Temple of the False God, sure you know what it does. Soul Ring, you ever heard of this? Okay, Sword of the Animus. This is my new favorite card, like... Period. I'm speculating on it hard. I, I picked up like six of them from Puka Trade. I think it's going to go up because you can put this in any EDH deck and even in green. Any deck that attacks or that wants to attack every turn, it could use this to ramp one mana every turn over the course of a, you know, 15 turn format. That's a huge huge advantage, not to mention that it thins out your deck and gives the equipped creature plus one plus one, which is relevant. Uh, you use this all, yeah, I love it, I love it. It's, ah, it's great. I love Ruby Medallion in, I mean, any mono red deck, but in Zada in particular, because often our storm count is pretty high, right? We like casting multiple spells per turn, which makes us better than a mana rock that we can only get value out of once, right? Every red spell we cast, we're getting some value, unless it's a kobold. Worn Power Stone is proof that even a bad soul ring is really, really good. Um, and then, okay, next we have a bunch of creatures that ramp. And some of these are like objectively bad cards in a vacuum, but we favor them over typical mana rocks in Zada because obviously we get an extra copy of each spell for each creature that we have. So, you know, for example, what's this? Milliken here? Really bad card. We have to mill one every time we want to ramp one colorless mana, and it's just a zero one creature. But, 
any and every creature that ramps and can go in Zada does go in Zada, save for the couple that I'm still waiting on uh, from Puka Trade. So that's the like generic stuff that goes in any deck. Now we're going to get into like Zada specific things. Um, as you might expect, we include lots of ways to put lots of creatures on to the battlefield. First of all, uh, Care Keep. We can tap it and two mana to put a 0-1 into play. Uh, Spawning Bed was recently printed, Battle for Zendikar, and you know for six mana and tapping it and sacrificing it, we get three Eldrazi spawns, or was it spawns? Scions. The activation cost on spawning bed is admittedly a little bit steep, but uh, in a monocolored deck we can afford to have a few extra non-basic lands, because, you know, we're going to have perfect mana every game. If we're ever in a pinch and feel that six mana and sacrificing this is a good price for three tokens, it's there. Um, Koldatha Rebirth, now this is a great price for three tokens, uh, just sack an artifact for one red mana. Normally we have an extra artifact just kind of lying around. Ooh, uh, Tempt with Vengeance, it's very easy for your opponents to make a mistake with this. They should never give you the extra tokens, but often they do, and often you win the game because of it. Fantastic card. Young Pyromancer. It's worth noting here that you do not get a 1-1 one, one for each copy of a spell that Zada creates, but even just getting you know the 1-1-1, one, 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 and you can uh, stack the triggers such that the 1-1 one, one comes into play before the Zada trigger, therefore getting another copy of whatever spell it happens to be. Um, definitely worth it. Good card. Cranko's uh -huh. Command. Two one ones for two. Th same thing with Dragon Fodder. Um, same thing with Mog War Marshal in most cases. And if you ever feel like paying the echo cost, normally I don't. But if you ever do, you know, it's kind of three for two. Um, Firecat Blitz is like a worse tempt with Vengeance, but the flashback cost will sometimes be paid if we're trying to win that turn. Hordling Outburst, pretty good value. Uh, <laughs> Empty the Warrens. Like I said, often our storm count is very high. And this is the only storm card in the deck, but more than worth it. Way more than worth it. We can get tons of value off of that. Cranko Mob Boss pretty obvious. Tap for extra goblins. Um, Beetleback Chief enters the battlefield. Two goblins. So it's three goblins for four, basically. Emrakul's Hatcher is, you know, a similar thing. Just a lot of creatures for good price. Siege Gang Commander, same thing. And Mirror Battlesphere, you know, same thing. Five creatures for seven. Not bad. So we have a bunch of ways to get uh, a bunch of creatures on the battlefield. That's great, but what are we going to do with those creatures is the obvious follow-up question. Well, we're going to draw a bunch of cards, first and foremost. Any deck that has a lot of uh, one toughness creatures, Skull Clamp belongs in it, uh, and that's no different in Zada. But we do have another way, a preferred way even, to draw a bunch of cards. Any spell that targets a single creature, which would be Zada, and also says draw a card is going to draw us as many cards as we have creatures at any given moment. So Crimson Wisps is, you know, <laughs> the rest of the text is basically irrelevant. It just says draw a card for each creature you control for one red mana at any time. Talentor's Edict. Zada forces you to look for these really weird cards that you, you wouldn't really use in any other situation. This says remove from the game target permanent you own or control and to draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So effectively what we're doing for one red mana at instant speed, usually we'll cast this on the end step of the player who comes right before us, is <laughs> we'll target Zada to exile all of our creatures just to draw, I don't know, hopefully 7, 10, 20 cards. <laughs> Accelerate is just a slightly more expensive Crimson Wisps. Uh, stun is kind of weird. It's very weird to cast Stun on your own creatures during your turn, saying my creatures can't block this turn. <laughs> but again, we're just trying to draw a bunch of cards. Um, Boiling Blood, again, a little weird to force ourselves to attack, but to draw a bunch of cards. Three mana, instant speed, definitely worth it. Um, zap, again, really weird to deal one damage to each of your creatures. Sometimes that, that kills a lot of our creatures, but if we're drawing a card for each one, often very worth it. Um, same thing with Flare. This is just a slightly worse zap. We um, we draw the card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, but we'll, we'll still take that. Okay, now we're getting into, uh, we have three cards here that do the same thing. They each draw us a card for each creature we control, but these three have very narrow timing windows, and I've messed it up before. I've, I've gotten confused in the middle of a game. But this says, yeah, target creature cannot block this turn. You can cast it only during combat before defense is chosen. Then these two, we uh, can play only after blockers are declared, and then we have to flip a coin for each creature we control, even though we don't really have to because it's normally not even going to be relevant for our creatures, but sometimes our opponents suck and they make us do it anyway because they're salty, blah blah blah, but they're going to draw us a bunch of cards. Also worth pointing out about these three is that you are not allowed to cast them, I looked this up, um, if there are no attackers. There is no declare blocker step if no attackers are declared. Often it's like, I'll swing at you with my ornithopter for zero, <laughs> and they'll be like, uh, I'll say, okay, before blockers, or 
after blockers, depending on which one I have. Very weird. So that was uh, 11 cards in the deck um, that allow us to draw a bunch of cards, fill up our hands, and then some, which is nuts for a mono red deck. Uh, so the next question is, what do we do? Once we have a super huge hand, well, the first thing is we try to hold on to that hand. We have a Thought Vessel, which is a new mana rock in the Commander 2015 set. It says you have no maximum hand size. Uh, or also the old standard Reliquary Tower, really good. And then we're also, we run a bunch of zero drops because if we don't happen to have these, you know, it's nice to just be able to say I cast all these things for zero. You've probably heard of all of these zero drops. These two are the ones that I hadn't heard of. Phyrexian Walker is a zero three for zero artifact creature with a lot of flavor text. And then we have Shield Sphere. This is a bizarre card. It's a zero six wall for zero. And if it's assigned as a blocker, so whenever it blocks, put a minus zero minus one counter on it. You know, if we have 10 effects that let us draw a card for each creature we have on the battlefield and we have more cards in our hand that we know what to do with, zero drops are really good. Not to mention that you can sandbag them to contribute to your storm count if you ever happen to. Where is it? Draw... Empty the Warrens there. So continuing with what we should do once we have every card in the world and then some in our hand. Um, well, first of all, Gamble becomes... Uh, I mean, it's good to begin with, but it becomes even better. It's Red's best only tutor, maybe, question mark. Search your library for any card and then discard a card from your hand at random. But if you have 40 cards in your hand, the chances that you're going to discard the card you search for are very low. It has still happened to me before. That's why they call it a gamble. It's very frustrating, but I, uh, Digress. Seething Song, just a good ramp spell. Uh, battle him even better ramp spell in this deck. Add run one red for each uh, creature you control. Treasonous Ogre, I mean, basically a ramp spell. It's not a sorcery like these two, but you can pay three life to add one red, which, you know, if you're trying to win this turn, you don't really care how much life you have left. Inner Fire, if you have 40 cards in your hand, this card is crazy good. Add one red for each card in your hand. And Mana Geyser, in a multiplayer format, you know, this averages, averages for 10 mana. Okay, so once you have these four sorceries, Pyromancer's Goggles starts to look real tasty, right? If you get two copies of this each time you spend this mana to cast it, but it gets better. We have Strionic Resonator to resonate the Pyromancer Goggle Trigger to get three copies of this, not to mention that we can also use Strionic Resonator um, on Zada's Trigger, getting two copies of each spell when we cast it. It's just such a, such a nice little stew. Every card synergizes with every other card, so well, it's just a, that's how you build decks, people. So that is how we get all the cards in the world in our hand and all of the mana, oh, oops, we could ever ask for in our mana pool. The only thing left to do is grab back our tech deck right here, grab that. We cast a tech deck for zero and then our opponents just scoop out of fear because who would do, uh, no, actually um, our primary win condition over here is dual caster mage plus either heat shimmer or twin flame. Let me walk you through this. Now all three of these cards are good in the context of Zada, even independent of their interactions with each other, right? Dual caster mage is just fantastic utility. I would run this card in any mono red deck. It allows us to copy any instant or sorcery that you know we cast or an opponent casts, and it's better than reverberate or fork in you know the context of Zada again because it has legs, right? Once this is on the battlefield, it creates an additional copy of whatever spell we cast targeting Zada, right? It's another creature. And Twin Flame and Heat Shimmer, uh, they do basically the same thing. They're sorceries that uh, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature we control. It gains haste and exile it at the end of uh, the turn. I'll have Zada on the battlefield. I'll cast Twin Flame, targeting Zada, um, holding priority. I will then cast Dual Caster Mage. This will enter the battlefield, will make a copy of Twin Flame. That copy of Twin Flame will resolve first. It will create a copy of Dual Caster Mage. When the copy of Dual Caster Mage enters the battlefield, we will copy the Twin Flame again, and do it again, and do it again, and do it again, and eventually we'll wind up with infinite, hasty Dual Caster Mages with which we can, you know, win. That's plan A, but sometimes it falls through, an opponent can disrupt it, or somehow they exile Dual Caster Mage from our library, or we mill Dual Caster Mage to Milliken. God damn it, Milliken, can't you do anything right? So plan B oh, would be um, the more aggro route, where you know we just have a bunch of creatures and Zada out, and we pump all the creatures and swing for lethal. Pretty straightforward. A lot of Zada decks are going to have a lot of these sort of aggro-y pump spell effects, and I really don't think that's the way um, to build the deck optimally. 
optimally. I have gone with these two as a backup. You know, Balduvian Rage is, A, a it draws us a card for each attacking creature we control, so it's another, you know, draw for each creature uh, effect, basically. And Reckless Charge is just very um, mana efficient, right? One mana for plus three, plus oh, and Haste, which is very relevant. Um, and it has Flashback, which we can use on the same turn if we're trying to win that turn. So for four mana, effectively, plus six, plus oh. Um, or we can just pour a bunch of surplus mana into this. And then plan C, I, I don't know actually, maybe this is plan B. Firestorm, I, I discovered this card and was so excited. It's one mana for an instant. Choose and discard X cards. Firestorm deals X damage to each of X target creatures and or players. If we have literally 60 cards in our hand, uh, we can discard 40 of them to kill all of our opponents. The only caveat there is there have to be 40 legal targets for this. So if there aren't, you know, 37 creatures plus three opponents, we couldn't quite do that. But usually you can do this at a high enough number that it's a all but lethal blow, or it's just great removal, right? If there are 10 threats on the board, you can deal 10 damage to each of them by discarding 10 cards you don't need. And finally, the last card I'm going to show you it was a new one in Commander 15, and when it was spoiled, that was the first moment that I was like, okay, all right, I have to build Zada Hedron Grinder. And oddly enough, it has the name of another popular commander in its title, but Mizzix's Mastery, for its overload cost, after a long game, it drawn a bunch of cards, like, if you have a stacked graveyard and your opponents can't respond to an overloaded Mizzix's Mastery and Zada's in play, you're going to win the game. Like, I, that, that's a guarantee. I guarantee it. Let's goldfish. Let's goldfish. All right, the deck is thoroughly shuffled. Let's just see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What do we have? Ah, let's take our mulligans. I kind of like this hand, except it's a little too high in the curve. Siege Gang Commander spits out tokens, but not as early as we're looking for in an opening hand. Firestorm, we definitely don't want in our opening hand. We only want to have that when we have like 50 cards in our hand to discard to kill everyone. And Mana Geyser, I'm a little on the fence about this, but I think I'm going to pitch this also along with one mountain. First mulligan, let's see if this is any better. Mountain, Scuttle Mutt, Milliken. That's a lot better. <laughs> but now the problem is it's all ramp everything with no way to refill our hand. So I think what I'm going to do here is uh, mulligan away a mountain, which is always a little scary, but I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, and uh, actually the thought vessel. Um, and that's it. So we're going to pitch two for one. That one will be a ruby belt to still all ramp everything. Uh, we're going to rock with this knowing that we get a scry one before uh, we take our first turn and hope that we just hit some way to draw lots of cards. So we will scry one. It is a kobold. That is not a way to draw cards, so we're going to put that on the bottom, and then we're going to begin the game turn one. We're going to draw a Temple of the False God. That's interesting. We will play a mountain and move on to turn two. We will draw. Uh, we get another land, a spawning bed. Not terrible. We will play our second mountain, and then with these two, we're going to go ahead and drop a Milliken onto the battlefield. <laughs> the worst mana dork ever, but we'll take it. Turn three, we will untap up, keep draw uh, an aleatory. Okay, that is a way to draw cards. It has a very awkward timing window, but uh, spawning bed come into play, and then for three mana, we will cast our scuttle mutt. Turn four, untap upkeep, we will draw a mountain. Okay, that's good. I didn't want to have to play the Temple of the False God while it wasn't online. We will play a mountain for turn. We're going to say for one, uh, two, we will cast our ruby medallion. Red spells cost one less to cast for us. And then for one, two, three, we will not use Milliken, so we don't have to mill. Uh, I will cast Zada at a slight discount. Now it is turn five and things are getting pretty serious. Uh, I'm going to draw a terrain generator. Okay, this turn's gonna be funky, but I think pretty cool. I'm gonna uh, drop a Temple of the False God. I do have five lands presently, so I'm gonna do one, two, uh, three. We're gonna mill one for Milliken, because Milliken sucks. We're gonna mill a Hordling Outburst. Okay, whatever. Three mana floating, and then we'll say four, five, uh, six, I guess. No, actually, we'll tap the mountain. Six here. We're gonna tap and sacrifice the spawning bed to get three 1-1 uh, Eldrazi Scions. We'll just say that Arnold here is an Eldrazi Scion. Then we're gonna move to combat. Let's assume we have an opponent at this point with no blockers and no answers. We'll swing at them with Zada. They will declare that they have no blockers, but before damage, before damage, we pay one red because it costs one less with Ruby Medallion, and we cast Aleatory. 
Targeting Zada. Play only after defense is chosen. Flip a coin. Target opponent calls heads or tails while the coin is in the air. If a flip ends up in your favorite target creature, gets plus. Basically, the only relevant bit of text is, you know, draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Maybe they'll take four, maybe they'll just take three. It doesn't matter. We're going to draw six cards. We pass turn, then during the next player's upkeep, one, two, three, four, five, Six. Eh, it could have been better, honestly. We can move on to turn six now. We will draw for turn. We have a reliquary tower. Timely? Not actually, not quite. We don't need that just yet. Ideally, we would have hit another way to draw a card for each creature we control, but we didn't. So the turn's going to look like this. We're going to play our terrain generator, and we're immediately going to activate it um, to put a mountain into play tapped, just so we don't have to discard. That puts us down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we're set up to have some pretty explosive turns coming up. We have a memnite and a battle him and an empty the Warrens. These three cards love each other. But the plan here is we're just going to pass turn and we're going to hold up enough mana to, you know, Chaos Warp and cycle uh, Star Storm, or use the Star Storm if we need to. Hopefully we don't because we have a pretty big board. So at the end of turn before ours, we will go ahead and one, two, three, cycle the Star Storm to draw a card. It's a care keep, still not what we want. This will be turn seven. We will draw a mountain. Perfect. Just kidding. Actually, we're in a pretty great position if we're in a, a regular game of Commander. I'm just frustrated because I'm trying to show you my awesome combo deck and it has decided to uh, take the control route, right? We have a Blasphemous Act, a Chaos Warp, ways to get incremental value, ways to ramp every turn. It's very controlly. And we'll make the most of it. We'll play a Care Keep as our land for turn. Then we will pass turn. At some point, someone's going to do something to try to mess with us. So we're going to say one and we'll mill one off of Milliken because Milliken's terrible. Okay, Shields here, we don't care. And we're going to Chaos Warp, whatever it is that they're doing to try to screw with us. Then we are going to generate some terrain with Temple of the False God and Terrain Generator, put a mountain into play tapped. And then we'll take our eighth turn right after we create a Cobalt. Turn number eight, we're going to draw. Big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies, and stop! Oh, that will kill, 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 that's good, that's good. Cast a Memnite for zero. Cast an Empty the Warrens for one, two, three. Costs one less. Storm count is one. We're going to get four goblins. Then I'm going to activate Care Keep to make another little uh, kobold. Then for one red mana, we are going to cast an Accelerate. Targeting Zada, all of my creatures gain haste. I'll draw a card for each one. So that's one, five, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cards. Ha 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 ha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'll give you a quick glance at all the cards in my hand here before proceeding with my turn. We're going to play a mountain for turn. I'll have to mill one for the Milliken. That's okay. We'll mill a heat shimmer to cast a tempt with vengeance for four because it costs one less with the ruby medallion. At a minimum, we're going to get four more goblins and if opponent bites, which they shouldn't, uh, we'll get twice that or three times that. Let's assume that they play smart and they don't though. I'll get four. So I will have eight goblins here. Then uh, with my last mana available to me, I'm going to cast a battle hymn, which will add red uh, to my mana pool for each creature I control. That's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have 17 mana, woo! We'll go down to 16 mana floating to cast a stun targeting Zada to make it so that my creatures can't block on my own turn. Very strange, but we're gonna draw 17 more cards. Give you a quick look at the 17 extra cards we drew. As it happens, um, we did hit our combo just sort of organically. So if you want to play more conservatively, depending on what your opponents have up, you have a f just a literal fistful of answers or ways to draw out their answers. Um, but we'll just make infinite dual caster mages, like I explained to you earlier, and win! <laughs> so that is Zada Hedron Grinder EDH. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't, subscribe to my channel so that you can be informed on YouTube's front page every time I upload a new one of these. If you want to check out my regular channel, my main channel, my more political channel, because EDH is the most political format of magic, right? Anyway, uh, youtube.com slash pogobat is where I, uh, you can actually like see my face and things. And uh, call your mother, uh, tell her you love her, uh, talk to her uh, for a good like 15 minutes today. She probably misses you. And bye! <laughs>